Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Demon Souls. Before we jump into the final level, there's some housekeeping we have to do here in the Nexus. Uh, namely, we want to talk to Yuria and Bjor. Do you intend to challenge the king? You may be a great demon hunter, but I fear you may not be ready. The king's defended by the black souls of mighty knights and a fire-breathing drake. I defeated even myself. That's how I ended up in the dungeon. Beware the limits of your own power. Beware the limits of your own power. And then over in the magician's corner, uh, we have... Whoop, this is the wrong corner. I knew something was off about that. Uh, we have another new denizen of the Nexus who we also rescued in 1-3. Yuria. Hello again. You saved me from great agony. I am sorry, for I cannot offer proper thanks. But should you have demon souls, I can teach you magic. Only my witchcraft is of a dark nature and arouses suspicions. Why not try the magic of the great sage Frake? Are you certain you wish to learn witchcraft? It would honor me to assist one such as you, but... Are you sure? Once, I lusted after demon souls. I passed the fissure into Boletaria, but became trapped by the Nexus. Then, the king's executioner, Meralda, chained me up inside that tower. My thirst for demon souls is no more. On the contrary, I find such power dangerous. I feel great misgivings about Freyk. I was branded a witch at a very young age and have been persecuted ever since. Although I never had ill intentions, this black craft of mine is intrinsically evil. If there is a god, he gave us souls to do good, not to practice witchcraft. My accusers detested my dark arts for good reason. For the path I have taken is tainted. This has been one of my realizations since coming to Volataria. But I am afraid that Freyk, too, has ventured down the wrong path. He has become obsessed with the dark arts. But I am afraid that Frey... So Yuria does indeed teach different sorceries uh, from Freak. You can pick up quite a few new spells from her, like Firestorm, using the dragon god, Demon Soul. Whose devastating flames will never be tamed. It's also Soul Thirst from the Old Monk. Spell heightens one's thirst for souls, enabling, enabling the caster to drain victims of every last soul within them. Simply demonic behavior when all is said and done. And I believe there are a couple of other interesting ones, like Curse Weapon from the Penetrator Soul. Symbolizes the mighty sword wielded by the Penetrator that has slain countless warriors who bravely faced... The demon. It's interesting that Yuria is reticent about her powers. Uh, oh, and relief from Astraya. Astraya become demon. Fully recover a companion by touching them. Astraya is the most corrupted of all demon kind, but her essence parallels the most divine of beings. And remember, those are two sides of the same coin. According to our talisman of beasts. I my life to you. If you are ever in need of my witchcraft, speak to me. It is a dark art. But it is all that I can offer. Yeah, Yuri has fully internalized that this power that she wields may not be pure. The scourge of Boletaria has activated all souls 
and energized all magic. Perhaps, then, we should work to preserve this state of heightened reality? Oh, no. <laughs> no, heaven forbid. The demons steal souls, and with them, our sanity. Such blasphemy must not be permitted. But he does sound tempted. The demons steal souls, and with them, our sound such blasphemy must not be permitted. So Freak has some of those reservations. He's on the verge of discovering something. But he clearly intends to push forward with his ambition. Oh, is that you? Do you have further offering? Oh, Freak and the candle maiden. And now there's something else that I want to get to in the Nexus, a side quest. So since our character tendency is now pure black and Yurt is dead, we've met the conditions for Mephistopheles to appear in the Nexus, the person who Yurt mentioned. I can see that you have killed before. No one can blame you for that. Demon souls are too precious to relinquish. Perhaps a slayer like you would have an interest in my offer. I want you to kill Saint Urbane and his followers. You will be rewarded amply. Do we have an agreement? A reason? Ha! Huh. Just think of it as an opportunity to remove a competitor. I mean, I know I said this was going to be 100%, but I don't think the virtuous and chivalrous Sir Pibby would have... God is displeased with St. Urbane and his disciples. Let this be a lesson. The chivalrous knight is as much a myth as the honorable samurai following the Bushido Code. Mighty bullshit. Oh, look at him go. Look at him try. Got two hits in with that little dagger. I'm almost bleeding. Adorable. Let's go visit Me <laughs> Mephistopheles again. Now that we've uh, committed an assassination for her. So, it is done. Here is your reward. Take it. Oh, just one stone of ephemeral eyes. Now for your next task. I want you to kill Sage Freak and his sniveling apprentice. Of course, I'll provide you with a fine reward. Excellent. I have high expectations. Yeah, we gotta stop Freak from going down a dark path anyway. We know that, we know the road that his ambition is going to set him on. The game has been making that painfully apparent. Also, I don't like his apprentice. Let's see if we can clip them both. Very good. Oh, and his apprentice had a chance. Just kind of blew it by being very weak. And from Freak's Corpse, Venerable Sage's Boots, Ring of Magical Sharpness, and a Baby's Nail. So, it is done. Here is your reward. Take it. Don't look at me with that ravenous countenance. There's more work to be done. I want you to kill Patches the Hyena. No reason for pause now, is there? Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this one. Uh-huh. Excellent. I have high expectations. So from the first two sets of assassinations, we get one stone of ephemeral eyes each. What was it that you said about, um... Life is hardly as precious as one thinks. 
And apparently that's all that's worth in the eyes of uh, your in Mephistopheles. This worked out quite well. We got him into backstab position, and of course we get a thief's ring from him. Might also expect something like another grave robber's ring, but that would be, what, the third or fourth one? I think you could get one off of him, can't you? You can buy one from him. So, I might just be thinking obliged, though. Here is your reward. Take it. Ah, this time we get something a little bit more juicy. Look at me with that ravenous countenance. There's more work. Another colorless demon soul to upgrade our special weapons. No reason for pause now, is there? Oh no. There's totally reason for pause on this one. I love your. It's like a big teddy bear. I have But duty calls. If we want that platinum trophy, we need to murder Bjor. Uh, and the reason for that is because at the end of the assassination quest line for Mephistopheles, uh, she gives you a unique ring that you need for the trophy. <laughs> uh, Bjor is the toughest one so far, which you could probably suss out given what he did to the penetrator. But it does take a couple of hits for him to aggro. Maybe oh, but I'm not frail. Oh, he stood there monologuing to me with his back turned. So he is going to go down almost as easily as the others. And we get the entire brushwood set from him, along with another ring of great strength. I'm keeping a close and that reminds me that all this stuff is very heavy. A colossal shield used by the Tower Knight, one of Boletaria's great heroes, said to ward off all forms of malice, but is incredibly heavy and nearly impossible to handle. The largest known shield in existence. An old large shield held by the Boletarian family for generations, highly resistant to flame, most recently used by Bjor of the Twin Fangs. It's just occurring to me that we never checked out the Tower Shield description. Uh, and there's a couple of other things. Heavy body piece belongs to a set. No, that's all old. Great strength allowed Bure of the Twin Fangs to wield a huge steel shield, a giant crossbow, and a hefty sword all at once. The original giant dad. You kind of the prototype for Havel, actually. Here is your reward. Take it. All right, another colorless soul. Don't look at me with that ravenous countenance. I want you to kill Prince Ariona, son of Alant. He goes by the pseudonym Ostrava. No reason for pause now, is there? Very much no reason for pause. But remember, I will not. Don't look I want at you no to kill reason for pause. Excellent. I have high ex Oh shit, there was another short line that she didn't repeat. Ah. Uh, so we are going to have to wait to finish that one out. That is the last of the assassinations. And the last time we saw Strava was in 1-3 where we rescued him for a third time. Hello. Uh, due to some issues, the footage for this part of the level went missing. And I had to re-record it. And then my new Elgato freaked out and erased the footage it just recorded. So I am re-recording -re this. Uh, but it's only a few minutes here at the start of 1-4 that I have to go over. The start of 1-4 where we see the corpse of one, one of the many drakes that have been ravaging the kingdom while Alant sits on his throne. So first, we have the three arbalists. They are not the problem. But eliminating them does give us a chance to step up on the body and appreciate the incredibly detailed modeling that went into this. Uh, 
And then we can see in the distance, we are not going to get this lizard. We are just baiting him out. That is Metis the Penetrator. And in the back, obviously, those are uh, Longbow Ulin and Alfred the Tower Knight, the actual phantoms of the knights that the Old One based the demons Phalanx, Tower Knight, and Penetrator from. And we've seen them before. These models in the death animations for their respective demons. Again, that last part is a new detail. Nice flourish. Uh, so I'm going to apply second chance here because they are both dangerous and should not be underestimated. Like so. Especially Ulin. Metis is easy enough because you can aggro him without getting either of the others uh, quite easily. This, though, is more of a two-on-one. So we want to abuse line of sight as best we can and keep it moving. Uh, we do have one very significant... Oh, Ulan really wants to melee me. Uh, we have one really significant advantage, especially against Alfred the Tower Knight. Our Moonlight Greatsword ignores his heavy shield entirely. And he's otherwise very slow. Except he can kind of do a low, my god, a lot of damage. Uh, he can also do a lunging attack, which we have to watch out for. Oh, there it is. Luckily, we have just barely enough HP and defense uh, not to get one-shotted by him. Where did she go? Is she in the middle? Yeah. So, Ulan, we still have to worry about. She's the trickiest one out of the three. And now that she's on low health, we want to make sure that she is dead. That we don't back off and give her a second because she won't heal. She'll cast Firestorm. The spell that we got off of Yuria, or that we could have gotten off of Yuria with the Dragon God Soul. Uh, it's like Wrath of God, a massive AoE that does a lot of damage will probably one-shot me. Uh, but that is all I needed to re-record, just those three phantoms. Uh, because it would be really anticlimactic to get here and then not fight them. So we're going to take out this lizard and then we'll get back to the actual recording from months ago at this point. As we go in here, we're going to dash straight to the back of the room because you can hear those heavy metal greaves stomping in the background as the red-eyed knight comes down the stairs. You can also hear the bolts of the arrows blinking away, so we fight him under the scaffolding to line of sight the arbalists up here. And also, once we come up here, we get another one of the Imperial Assassins dropping down to further complicate this fight. You just kind of have to compartmentalize it into small chunks to stay safe in here. It's also really dangerous because you notice all the wooden beams. Uh, they can be a, a significant hindrance if you're swinging around a big heavy weapon like the Moonlight Greatsword. You have to be very careful about it. Oh, another one. Dodged both of those. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Centimeter out of range. Not that time. He does recover quite quickly. Which makes him dangerous. Oh no! We're both just going for it. Come on. Oh my gosh. It's times like this that I wish Demon Souls had the plunging attack. That was added uh, first in Dark Souls, though. Not too surprised that uh, Bluepoint did not implement that in the remake. It goes a little bit beyond quality of life. So now that we are helpfully very low on HP... Oh, we're going to trigger this cutscene and then get invaded. 
I think, I don't know if the invader is bound by the cutscene. <laughs> Anyway, we're glad to be critically low on HP, uh, so we can trigger the Clever Rat's Ring. And also, I'm going to use my most powerful technique in order to defeat the invader, because I do not have time for this today. So we want to wait for it to breathe fire. It's going to kill that fat official off in the distance. Uh, that official is standing in... He's standing just shy of a safe spot. It's actually this official uh, that if we wanted to take a pause, we could. It's safe to stand there and fight him, but we can just run straight through. Now, the other thing is um, I could sit here shooting the Drake, but it would eventually fly off to its next and final perch right here above Alant's throne room. So we'll just fire 500 arrows into that bridge when we come to it. Uh, we do have one other thing to do before we confront that. 1-4 has a brand new shortcut in the remake right here because the run back to the boss was obnoxious even by Demon's Souls standards. So brand new for the remake is this shortcut. Uh, there is a ladder that we can get up. And with this door now open, that's kind of, that's a lot of running that we don't have to do. It's still a lot of running that we have to do if we do die. Uh, and we haven't even gotten to the extremely long elevator yet. I just want to stop and grab that soul and come back down around. Uh, but since the dragon relocates, we can just take advantage of the shortcut we opened up. I recently learned about something very cute. Uh, early on in the remake's development, Bluepoint needed some test dummies. Uh, and in their asset library was this bright yellow rubber duck model. And that became the de facto test dummy slash placeholder. It's really cute, so it became like this beloved internal studio meme so beloved that they had to kill their darling. Uh, they were afraid of damaging their reputation with Sony, according to uh, Collis Harris, one of their artists. So they stopped using the ducks to make sure none of them slipped into the final game. By the way, this spot right here, this precise spot on the walkway, totally safe. It's going to be our vantage point to uh, fill the blue drake full of arrows, just like we did the other drake. So yeah, they stopped using the ducks. I feel like that could have been a cute Easter egg, and there are absolutely cutesy blue point specific Easter eggs in the game. Like, remember the goats in Shadow of the Colossus? They're back, kinda. Uh, you'll see. You'll see quite soon. Perfect. This great traumatic almost anti perspective oh hell yeah i love this uh brought to you by this nifty safe spot fantastic so what you're obviously meant to do is just time things right and run through until you get safely inside but you can also just kill the dragon and get that trophy and the soul. It's soon to gain a large number of souls. It's a shame they're not more unique in their descriptions. Uh, you can also get Bior, if he's still alive and you haven't assassinated him, uh, to tank some of the fire breath for you. And he does it admirable job of it too, especially with the brushwood set, which is all fire resistance. FromSoft actually does design certain difficult 
things so that it's possible to cheese through them, to beat them in some quote unquote cheap way, which I honestly love. Dark Souls is um, even it goes even further with this where it's punishing. It's full of surprises and these devilish ambushes. So why not afford players the ability to be devious and come up with their own clever, insidious ways to beat something? Oh, it's you, is it? My father is up above. Ha! <laughs> well, something like him anyway. A demon in his shape. I began this quest to ask my father his reasons. To drag him back to the path of righteousness. But it seems it was all in vain. Please... Kill my father. In his depraved state, he can only bring peril to these lands. This key opens Boletaria's mausoleum. Inside the mausoleum lies father's sword, the demon brand, twin of soul brand. Use it to bring an end to his madness. <gasps> gives us the key to the mausoleum in 1-1 and summarily commits suicide. Which helps us for the assassination quest line, but a tragic ending to a story nonetheless. But fear not, he's still around to cause one more problem for us even after his untimely death in the form of a black phantom. Not a super threatening one, but we always have to be careful with a bridge that we don't just roll off of it. We can bait him to roll off. That might work out okay. And yes, we will get credit from Mephistopheles for the assassination. Even though we did not do the deed ourselves. And now... Only one elevator stands between us and whatever is on the throne that is not the actual flesh and blood and soul of King Alon, but something else. We will confront that demon next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.